All right, Congressman, it is good to see you, sir. I know that you needed a break from Washington, D.C., as all of our delegation did. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I want to start, if I, if you don't mind, uh, sure. JT was such a great friend. And I just, uh, my uh, prayers and uh, heart is with his family. And uh, just, we're going to miss him a ton. He was uh, a great man. It has been a surreal week. It really has, uh, all the way up to the, the funeral. And uh, uh, we have to march on. And I know that he's got a better place to listen to this now. So it, he do, And he doesn't have to deal with D.C. Uh, no. Man, I'm so glad to get yeah. out of that place uh, for a little while and back home to where people are normal and don't live in that bubble. It's so good to be home. You've been there for how many years now? Six. Yeah. It's changed in six years, hasn't it? It has. The last year has been the most toxic uh, in the six that I've been up there. And you still got people on both sides who want to work, but it just seems like the uh, – the, the real far left, the Corey Bushes and the AOCs, uh, yeah. they're just driving uh, the, this liberal, socialist, communist agenda, and uh, and nobody's putting the brakes on them. Of course, we're trying to. Listen, I, I said once that I would love to see the Democrat Party get back to where the Democrat Party was 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. may not be good for Republicans, but it is good for the country because you're still fighting together for what is good for this country. And, and now we're not doing that. Yeah, and, but they're having a hard time accomplishing anything right now in the yeah. House. Uh, they've got such a slim majority, and they're so divided. Uh, it's hard to govern. It's easy to throw bombs, but it's hard to govern, and uh, they're finding that out. I think when when uh, P-Day happens, it's almost like V-Day. If P-Day happens, we ought to celebrate in the streets. That's when Pelosi decides to hang it up. Or is defeated one way or the other. Well, I hope uh, I hope we're going to help her with that in the midterms too. next year, and uh, and I think that's going to be a good way to put her out. But here's what worries: don't take that for granted. And, not, and not I hope doing nobody's it. taking that for granted from the GOP uh, head honchos up in the at the at the. Uh, at the, at the main office all the way down to the grassroots. Don't take it for granted. No, I, I actually was talking about that last night, and I talked to Tom Emmer, who's the NRCC chair all the time, yeah. and we talk about it. you got to run through the tape, and nothing's for granted, and you've got to finish every election until they quit voting at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, the night of election. You've got to work hard. It, it's tough having our delegation here because it's hard for me to blame anything on you. Because you just don't have any power, to be honest with you. And what I ask you, uh, and you could probably do it on the right hand, what things have you guys put together as far as a bipartisan uh, list for th that's made it all the way through? Well, and it's very difficult to. It, it, I, I know there are things, but are they that many meaningful? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, the only thing that I've done, and, uh, and and it's meaningful to me, but I guess in the in the scope of everything, is I got to name a post office after Smitty Harris, uh, Carlisle Harris, who is uh, an amazing man, and I uh, was in a Harold Hilton for almost eight years, uh, one of the first guys shot down. I think he was number six. But uh, and, but we're working on NDA right now, and there's a lot of bipartisan stuff in that. And uh, we the, passed the National Defense Authorization yeah. Act, and uh, this will be, I think, the 62nd straight year that we passed that. And uh, it funds our defense, but they've just cut the numbers so much. Uh, you know, the Biden administration is uh, is wanting to do green stuff instead of support our troops that uh, defend this nation. Some of the, the the stuff that's in the infrastructure bill itself, have you seen the package uh, that's going to be presented? I have not yet. Uh, I've heard of some of it. Uh, it's going to be difficult for me to support $1.1 uh, $1 .1 trillion in spending. Uh, you know, I'm not a spender. I, I like to cut that budget, and, uh, and as long as it's on bridges and roads, but uh, most of the stuff they're talking about is not on bridges and roads. It's on other things. Uh, hopefully the one that comes out of the Senate will be palatable, but I don't, I don't think so right now. I also wonder, because when we start thinking about some of the things, the 5G uh, is where the government wants to funnel a lot of this. We have the government wants to funnel a lot of the electric stations, the refueling stations or recharging stations. And the Republicans part of this is let the, let the private sector do it. Well, and, and, and that makes sense to me. Why do we have to do that? Well, I, I, going back real quick, you asked about what we've done. The Ag Committee actually passed out a rural broadband bill that hopefully will pass the Senate, which will extend broadband to all our folks in the far reaches, which, you know, now everybody needs to be connected. Um, but, Lord, the, the Biden administration, they just don't make sense uh, with, with a lot of the stuff they do. Well, I, I listen to some of the things that, that he has seen, and, and I don't know what the – progression rate is to oblivion, but he is fast on the way there. But here's one little uh, shot this week. Places that have offered the hundred thousand, the hundred thousand, a hundred dollars. That'd be really good. I'd go back and get vaccinated three times. 
with all kidding aside, offered the hundred dollars to get vaccination have seen an uptick of 25 percent in a daily vaccination rates. I, I got to tell you that, that one of the things that just maybe because I'm a baby boomer, but you go out there and you work and you do what uh, you earn, what you do. And to me, it's just counterproductive to say, look, you need to get this shot and I'm going to pay you one hundred dollars. Then somebody else is going to say, well, I'll get a shot. Where's my hundred dollars? Or if you've already gotten it, it's kind of like yeah, uh, it's right. I've already the gotten thing. it. Where's mine? But but talking back on uh, on the uh, re- the the energy stations, you know, you know, electricity has to be made. It's not electricity is not just a, a raw substance, and so it has to be made. And you still have go uh, coal or gas or yeah. or nuclear, and uh, and and they're not paying taxes like you pay a gasoline tax, which maintains our highways. Uh, but you're not paying that on these electric charging stations, so it sounds great, uh, but it, but it's not. I mean, there's nothing to fund the highways in. It's it's happened over and over to us, and I sound like a dummy sometimes on the air mentioning this to people, but you kind of want to slap them and say, have you seen what's been going on with the light bulb, with the toilets, with the plastic bags, with the paper bags, with all of this difference? It never works out for them. It never works out. You, you, you know, you got people like Walmart now saying we got to get rid of the, the plastic bags. They got rid of the paper bags. You got the light bulbs that are worthless. The toilet has to be flushed 15 times. You got these windmills that are. It's, I mean, it's almost like medical marijuana in a way. They, they talk about all the great stuff, but they don't talk about the bad stuff. They absolutely do not. And, uh, it, you know, everything in life is a trade-off. If you get something, you give something up to get it. And they don't understand. They think you just yeah. get stuff. But that's the way they spend money. Uh, tr- Congressman Trent Bla- uh, Kelly is with me. Have you ever seen some of the numbers, Congressman Kelly, on what would happen if a majority of people in this country went to electrical vehicles, electric vehicles? I have not, but I, I can I've, imagine. I've seen some of those in the chaos that would put the economy the overload. As a matter of fact, um, people charging their vehicles at night across America in large numbers would probably throw the whole grid out, and, and uh, you would have blackouts, darkouts, and things like that at nighttime. It's we, just no, they have no idea what the consequences would be. If we follow the Biden administration, we're heading quick to be a third world country. <sighs> Places that have offered the hundred thousand, the hundred thousand, hundred dollars. <laughs> That'd be really good. I'd go back and get vaccinated three times. But all kidding aside, offered the hundred dollars to get vaccination, have seen an uptick of 25 percent in daily vaccination rates. We got people now have to put him to bed and probably wake him up too. We got more coming up with Congressman Trent Kelly in a moment. Don't go anywhere.